there is no such thing as chance when a tree is burning in a forest fire and although the nearest tree is spared at this stand tree catches fire this may appear to be chance similarly one may seem to get different types of bodies by chance but actually one receives these bodies because of the mind the mind flickers between accepting and rejecting and according to the acceptance and the rejection of the mind we receive different types of bodies although we superficially seem to obtain these bodies by chance even if we accept the theory of chance the immediate cause for the change of body is the agitation of the mind so now on amsa this chapter describes that krishna appeared amsena with his parts and parcels or his partial manifestation in this connection Sri Dhara Swami says that Krishna is one hundred percent Bhagwan. Krishna is to Bhagwan Swam. Because of our imperfection, however, we cannot appreciate Krishna in fullness. and therefore whatever krishna exhibited when present on earth was but a partial manifestation of his opulence again krishna appeared with his plenary expansion baladev krishna however is full there is no question of his appearing partially in the vaishnava toshani shrila sanatan goswami says that to accept that krishna was partially manifested would contradict the statement krishna stu bhagwan swayam yeah. shri jeeva goswami says that the word amshena means 
that Krishna appeared with all his plenary expansions. The words Amsena, Vishnu, do not mean that Krishna is a partial representative of Vishnu. Wow. Rather, Krishna appeared in fullness. It's just to advance saying, means all Vishnu's all appear. All the Vishnu's. Vishnu, that's Vishnu. All the appear. Rather, Krishna appeared in fullness and he manifests himself partially in the Vaikuntha Lokas. In other words, Lord Vishnu is a partial representation of Krishna. Krishna is not a partial representation of Vishnu. In the, in the Chaitanya Charita Amrita Adi Leela, Chapter 4, the subject matter is explained very clearly. Srila Vishwanatha Chakravarti Thakur also notes that no one can describe Krishna in fullness. <clears throat> Whatever descriptions we find in Srimad Bhagavatam are partial explanation of Krishna. In conclusion, therefore, the word Amsena indicates that Lord Vishnu is a partial representation of Krishna. Not that Krishna is a partial representation of Vishnu. Srila Sanatan Goswami's Vaishnava Tosini has explained the word Dharma Silasya. The exact meaning of Dharma Sila is an unadulterated, unadulterated devotee. Real dharma consists of full surrender to Krishna. Sarva dharman paritajya maam ekam saranam braja. One who has fully surrendered to Krishna is actually religious. Huh? Okay. One who has fully surrendered to Krishna is actually religious. This is his religion is completely spiritual. Your, your, your religion is 
kind of material concept. But, but the Prabhupada is saying this is not the name of One such religious person was Maharaj Parikshit. Anyone who accepts the principle of surrender to the lotus feet of the Lord, giving up all other systems of religion, is actually dharmashil, perfectly religious. The word nipratta tarsai refers to one who no longer has any material desire Sarvopadhi Vinur Muktam. One may have many material desires because of contamination in this material world. But when one is completely free from all material desires, he is called Nivritta Trishna. Wow. Which indicates that he no longer has any thirst for material enjoyment. Swamin Kritartho Smi Varam Na Yache Hari Bhakti Subodaya Materialistic person want some material profit from executing devotional service. But this is not the purpose of service. The perfection of devotional service lies in complete surrender unto the lotus feet of Krishna. See that. With no lotus feet of Krishna. Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna. But lotus feet of Krishna is Radha Krishna. Krishna means Radha Krishna. Krishna is never alone with Radha. Hmm. But in so this Krishna who is here and here is a present. Just go back. In Vrindavan. Out of Vrindavan we don't know. We know on the present time. There are the perfection of devotional service lies in complete surrender unto the lotus feet of Krishna yeah. with no material desires. One who surrenders in this way is already liberated. Yeah. Jeevan Mukta Sa Uchyate. You say Jeevan Mukta. That is for 
surrenders in this way is already liberated. Yeah. One who is always busy serving Krishna yeah. in whatever condition he may leave is understood to be liberated even in this life, yeah. such a person who is a pure devotee does not need to change his body yeah. indeed, he does not possess a material body. For his body has already been spiritualized. Sri this is so. An iron rod kept constantly within a fire will ultimately become fire. Yeah. And whatever when it, Saru is thinking for Radha and Krishna, Radha Mohan, and iron is that, then it will become also a fire in the Mysore fire. That is Saru. Perfection will come. Wow, from far. And whatever it touches will burn. Wow. Similarly, the pure devotee is in the fire of spiritual existence. And therefore, his body is Chinmaya. Yeah. That is spiritual body. Body is the covering of his spiritual body. My material body will never become Chinmaya. It is a gross body. My soul body will become Chinmaya. That is not material. My material body, my ego, my senses are material. But the soul is Chinna. It's not touched with material. Because the pure devotee has no desire, but the transcendental desire to serve the Lord. In text 4, the word Upagya Mandat is used. Nivartha Tarsair Upagya 
manata who will chant the glories of the lord unless he is a devotee therefore the word nivritta tarsai indicates the devotee and no one else these are the remarks of acharyas like veer raghava acharya and vigyan dhaja to desire anything other than devotional service will diminish one's freedom from material desires but when one is free from all such desires one is called nivritta tarsai vina pashugna the word pashu means animal an animal killer pashugna cannot enter into krishna consciousness in our krishna consciousness movement therefore animal killing is completely prohibited uttam shloka gunanuvad the word uttam shloka means one who is famous as the best of those who are good the lord is good in all circumstances that is his natural reputation his goodness is unlimited and he uses it unlimitedly a devotee is also sometimes described as uttam shloka meaning that he is eager to glorify the supreme personality of godhead or the lord's devotees glorifying the lord and glorifying the lord's devotees are the same or rather glorifying the devotee is more important than glorifying the lord directly oh. narottama das thakura explains this fact छाड़िया वैष्णव सेवा निस्तारा पाए छे के बा वन कैन नॉट बी लिबरेटेड फ्रॉम मटीरियल कंटेमिनेशन विदाउट सिंसियरली सर्विंग ए डिवोटी ऑफ कृष्णा
Bhavau Sabhad means from the universal remedy. Bhavau Sadhat. Chanting the holy name and glorifying the Supreme Lord are the universal remedy for all the miseries of materialistic life. Persons who desire to be freed from this material world are called Mumukshu. Such persons can understand the miseries of materialistic life and by glorifying the activities of the Lord, they can be released from all these miseries. The transcendental sound vibration concerning the Lord's name, fame, form, qualities, and the parent familia are all none different from the Lord. Therefore, the very sound vibrations of the Lord's glorification and name are pleasing to the ears. And by understanding the absolute nature of the Lord's name, form and qualities, the devotee becomes joyful. Even those who are not devotees, however, enjoying the pleasing narration of the Lord's transcendental activities, Even ordinary person, not very much advanced in Krishna consciousness, take pleasure in describing the narrations depicted in Srimad Bhagavata. When a materialistic person is purified in this way, he engages in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Because glorification of the Lord's past times is very pleasing to the ear and heart of the devotee, it is simultaneously his subject and object. In this world, there are three kinds of men. Those who are liberated, those trying to be liberated, and those entangled 
intense enjoyment. Of these three, those who are already liberated chant and hear the holy name of the Lord, knowing perfectly that to glorify the Lord is the only way to keep oneself in a transcendental position. Those who are trying to be liberated, the second class may regard the chanting and hearing of the Lord's holy name as a process of liberation and they too will feel the transcendental pleasure of this chanting. In this world, there are three kinds of men, those who are liberated, those trying to be liberated, and those entangled in sense enjoyment. Of these three, those who are already liberated chant and hear the holy name of the Lord, knowing perfectly that to glorify the Lord is the only way to keep oneself in a transcendental position. Those who are trying to be liberated, the second class, may regard the chanting and hearing of the Lord's holy name as a process of liberation. And they too will feel the transcendental pleasure of this chanting. As for karmis and persons engaged in sense gratification, they also may take pleasure in hearing the pastimes of the Lord, like his fighting on the battlefield of Kurukshetra and his dancing in Vrindavana with the gopis. The word Uttama Shloka Gunanuvada refers to the transcendental qualities of the Supreme Lord, such as his affection for Mother Yashoda and his friends, the cowherd boys and his loving attitude towards the gopis. The Lord's devotees like Maharaja Yudhishthira are also described by the qualification Uttama Sloka Gunanuvada. The word Anuvada refers to describing the qualities of the Supreme Lord or 
his devotees. When these qualities are described, other devotees are interested in hearing them. The more one is interested in hearing about these transcendental qualities, the more one transcendentally enjoys. Everyone, therefore, including the Mumukshus, the Vimuktas, and the Karmis, should chant and hear the glories of the Lord. And in this way, everyone will benefit. Although the sound vibration of the transcendental qualities of the Lord is equally beneficial to all. For those who are muktas, liberated, it is especially pleasing. As described in Srimad Bhagavatam, 8th Kanto, 3rd chapter, verse 20. Because pure devotees who no longer have any material desires surrender fully to the lotus feet of the Lord, they always merge in the ocean of bliss by chanting and hearing the Lord's holy name. According to this verse, devotees like Narada and other residents of Swetadipa are seen always engaged in chanting the holy name of the Lord because by such chanting they are always externally and internally blissful. The Mumukshus, person desiring to be liberated, do not depend on the pleasures of the senses. Instead, they concentrate fully on becoming liberated by chanting the holy name of the Lord. Karmis like to create something pleasing to their ears and hearts. And although they sometimes like to chant or hear the glories of the Lord. They do not do it openly. 
devotees, however, always spontaneously hear, chant about, and remember the activities of the Lord. And by this process, they are fully satisfied. Even though these may seem like topics of sense gratification, simply by hearing the transcendental narrations of the Lord's activities. Parikshit Maharaj was liberated. He was therefore Srotramano Bhirama, that is, he glorified the process of hearing. This process should be accepted by all living entities. To distinguish persons who are bereft of these transcendental pleasures, Parikshit Maharaj has used the words Virajiyeta Puman. The word Puman refers to any person, whether man, woman, or in between. Because of the bodily conception of life, we are subject to lamentation. But one who has no such bodily conceptions can take pleasure in transcendental here and chanting. Therefore, a person fully absorbed in the bodily concept of life is surely killing himself by not making spiritual progress. Such a person is called Pashugna, especially excluded from spiritual life, are the animal hunters who are not interested in hearing and chanting the holy name of the Lord. Yeah. Such hunters are always unhappy, both in this life and in the next. Yeah. It is therefore said that a hunter should neither die nor leave because for such persons both living and dying are troublesome. Animal hunters are completely different from ordinary karmis. 
and thus they have been excluded from the process of hearing and chanting vina pashukhna they cannot enter into the transcendental pleasure of chanting and hearing the holy name of the lord the word maharatha refers to a great hero who can fight alone against 11000 other heroes and the word atiratha as found in text 5 refers to one who can fight against an unlimited number this is mentioned in the mahabharata as follows एकादशा सहर्षनी योदा येद यस्तु धनविनम अस्त्र शस्त्र प्रवीणाच महारथा स्मृत अमित योद्धा येद यस्तु संप्रोक्त तिराथास्तु सह दिस इज द डिस्क्रिप्शन गिवेन इन द बृहद वैष्णव तोषणी by sanatan goswami maya manushya syasya because of being covered by yoga maya naam prakash sarvasya yoga maya समर समर्वृता कृष्ण इज समटाइम्स कॉल्ड माया मनुष्य इंडिकेटिंग दट ऑल दो इज द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड ही अपियर्स लाइक एन ordinary person a misunderstanding arises because yoga maya covers the vision of the general public the lord's position is actually different from that of an ordinary person for although he appears to act like an ordinary man he is always transcendental the word maya also indicates mercy and sometimes it also means knowledge the lord is always full of all transcendental knowledge and therefore although he acts like a human being he is the supreme personality of god it full of knowledge in his original identity the lord is the controller of maya maya dakshina prakriti ka sate sach characharam therefore the lord 
may be called maya manushya or the supreme personality of god head playing like an ordinary human being although he is the controller of both the material and spiritual energies the lord is the supreme person purushottama but because we are deluded by yoga maya he appears to be an ordinary person ultimately however yoga maya induces even a non devotee to understand the lord as the supreme person purushottama in bhagavad gita we find two statements given by the supreme personality of godhead for the devotees the lord says तेषा सतत युक्ता भजता प्रीतिपूर्वक ददा बुद्धि तम ये नाम उपयती ले टू दोज वर कंस्टंटली डिवोटेड एंड वर्शिप मी विथ लव आई गिव द अंडरस्टैंडिंग by which they can come to me thus for the willing devotee the lord gives intelligence by which to understand him and return home back to god for others for non devotees the lord says mrityu sarva haras cham i am all plundering inevitable death a devotee like prarada enjoys the activities of lord narsim deva where is non devotees like prarada's father hiranyakashipu meet death before lord narsim deva the lord therefore acts in two ways by sending some on to the path of repeated birth and death and sending others back home back to godhead the word kala the word kala meaning black indicates the color of the supreme personality of godhead krishna lord krishna lord ramchandra who both look blackish give liberation and transcendental bliss to their devotees among persons possessing material bodies sometimes someone is able to subject death to his own will for such a person 
death is almost impossible because no one wants to die but although bhishma deva possessed this power bhishma by the supreme will of the lord died very easily in the lord's presence there have there have also been many demons who had no hope of salvation yet come sir attend salvation by the supreme will of the lord not to speak of kamsa even putana attained salvation and reached the level of the lord's mother parikshit maharaj therefore was very eager to hear about the lords who has inconceivable qualities by which to give liberation to anyone parikshit maharaj at the point of his death was certainly interested in his liberation जय जय श्री